What up, Giants fans? You're watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, and we have a loaded show for you all today. There's reports out there that Kadarius Toney is not at voluntary OTAs. We don't have proof, but we got a little bit of proof, maybe a little shred of truth. Maybe it's a little bit of a rumor. We'll break that down later on in today's show. The Giants, they also made eight roster moves. It's more active than they've been throughout the free agency cycle where they sign nobody but veterans to minimum contracts. So we'll break all eight roster moves down. And then we have two live Q&As where I'll be answering your questions here live on the show. If you want to get a question featured, get down in the comments section, use hashtag Giants and ask any question you want. But while the audience builds up and people click on that notification, sit down in their seats, get ready for the show. I'm curious, where are you watching from? Shout out your city. It's one of my favorite questions to ask Giants Now viewers, because look, we are all over the world. Giants fans are a worldwide fan base, and we have fans that watch this show from coast to coast. One of my favorite things about chat sports is that we're all over the world. The live chat <clears throat> is already popping, and I see you guys are participating in the poll. If you haven't voted yet in the poll, go and do so right now. Lions Talk with Micro Mike is in the chat. What is going on? I don't really have a cool sub read for you today, but if you love the Detroit Lions, go sub to my guy, Lions Talk with Micro Mike. Cha or Che, C-H-A, Seaside Park, New Jersey. What up, Alex? Good to see you, my guy from the UK, always repping. Ray Nunez from Pennsylvania, PA. What is up, Mario? What's happening, man? You still talking to Sterling Shepard? I remember at one point in time, your username was Sterling Shepard's little brother, but you spelled Shepard different, so maybe it was a different Sterling Shepard. What's going on? King Blue says Kadarius Tony is not being traded. I agree. I do not think Kadarius Tony is being traded. We are not going to be talking about that in today's show. Chris, what, what up, Chris? Chris17, yo, from Brewster, New York. Carol Green, my mother, watching from Richmond, Texas. What is going on, Carol? Hixie Dust, one of the most loyal subscribers we have on the channel. My guy, what's going on, bro? Love chopping it up with you. He's from Long Island, New York. That's where I was born. I was born in Long Island. That's where the fam's from. Is it on Long Island? You're born on Long Island, not in Long Island. I don't know what I said the first time, but that's what I'm talking about right now. We got a super chat from my guy, 2-2. We'll break that down in a second. Steve Marks watching from Baltimore. Forever NYG said Bradbury is the ops now. Yeah, he plays for the city now that celebrates a broken bell. He's a loser in my book. Timothy, he is uh, from Florida. Let's ride, bro. Um, super chat from Tutu, calling me Marshy. I wonder why he's calling me that last live chat. Got off the rails and everyone started calling, him, calling me Marshy. We can do that if you want. That's, that's cool. Salute Marshy and greetings from our entire Italian national rugby team. Training in Tokyo, Japan to our Giants family in America. Tutu, that's awesome. Look, hey, send me some highlights of you playing rugby. I'd love to watch that. I appreciate you watching the show. I always see in the comments of other Giants YouTube channels. Now you're in the comments of the best Giants YouTube channel out there. Look, everyone that covers the Giants do a hell of a job on YouTube, but I'm glad to see you in the chat today, and I appreciate the $5 super chat. Anybody that supers will get on today's show, and your questions will be, ba be guaranteed to get on today's mailbag. What about this question, though? When did you become a New York football Giants fan? I'm curious. One of my earliest memories of the Giants was when they played the, uh, the Minnesota Vikings in the NFC Championship game in 2000 where they absolutely blew them out. I was just six, seven years old, but I remember being at my dad's buddy house, Mike Kipson. I don't know if you're watching Fred or if Fred. <laughs> my mom said I like Marshy. That's hilarious. But, yes, that was one of my earliest memories was the NFC Championship game against the Minnesota Vikings. I don't remember the play-by-play. -play. I just remember being at the house, watching the game, and my dad and his friend Mike Kipson going crazy. Kavis is from New Jersey. What up, my guy? Camo's from UK Blue. King Blues, he's watching from Buffalo. Long Island is in the house. Represent. What's going on, Karen? A real fan where I understood football, 1992, says Kavis. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm sorry. Chris Borsolino, 17, says 2007 season versus the Bills. Ahmad Bradshaw, yeah, he ran for the touchdown and the logo on his helmet came off because he was running so fast through the snow. One of the best plays in Giants history. That kind of sparked the 20, uh, 2007 playoff run where they eventually beat the New England Patriots in, in, in the Super Bowl. Wolf Z from 1963 at birth, three weeks into the season. 
That's awesome. The realist says 2017 and been with them for almost five years now. So you've been watching the Giants through the dog days of their season or of their tenure of what they've been doing recently. You haven't got to live the glory days. I'm sorry about that. And Tarbin, 1995 since I've been born. Baby pictures and Giants onesies. That's awesome. I'm sure I got a couple of those as well. What about this, though? We'll break this down later on the show when we talk about the latest Giants news and rumors. Is Kadarius Toney not being at voluntary OTAs a problem? It's not confirmed that he's not there, but it's not confirmed that he is there either. I went through 200 pictures that the Giants social media team posted to their website of day one and day two of OTAs, and I didn't see one picture of Kadarius Toney. I also didn't see a picture of Kenny Galladay. That was upsetting it well. That doesn't mean they're not there. They could just not be practicing. They could be hurt. So I don't want to say he's not there. But I don't want to say he is there because I didn't see him in any of the pictures. But is Kadarius Toney not being at voluntary OTAs a problem for you? Type P for problem. Type N for it's no big deal. James Yoder's pushing P in the chat. That might you get that might get you in the celly, yo. Shout out YSL for that. Kevai says people understand football at one day old. That is true. You are either born a football fan or not. Cha says P for it's a problem. I agree for the simple fact that Tony. Didn't have a good rookie season. New head coach, new GM, new offensive coordinator, a lot of new people on this team. I don't think because he's not at OTA, he's not going to have a good season, but it kind of que- makes me question what he wants out of his football career. I'm upset about it because Kadarius Tony not being there makes the Giants worse. And if the Giants are worse, my life sucks. My, life, my life's happiness revolves around the Giants. If they're good, if they're winning games, I'm happy. If they're bad, like they've been for a while now, I'm not going to be happy, so I call it a big deal. Hixie Dust calls it a P for a problem. Wolf C says P for punk. That's not an option, but I like that. Mick Pratt says maybe Kadarius' grandmother died again. I don't know what that's all about. But look, he might have a good reason not to be there. That's that's fair. Brian Dable said when he uh, had Kadarius Tony reported to voluntary workouts a couple of weeks ago, he said he was there for every event, but then OTA started this week, and there's reports that he's not there. Ray Nunez says P for problem. I still believe in him. And Michael Krause, what up, Brody, says P for problem as well. What about this question? You guys scolded me in the comments of yesterday's video where we talked about the latest news and rumors. And I asked you at the top of the show, who is your Giants goat? Not is the Giants goat. Who is your Giants goat? I think there's a little bit difference in that question. Because yours could mean it could be a little bit closer to you. Maybe if you're a young kid, you didn't see Lawrence Taylor play. So you eyes your goat. Or maybe if you're an older guy or an older woman that watches this show and you lo- you lived through the glory days of Lawrence Taylor, you thought it was Lawrence Taylor. I'll tell you this. We got about 200 votes on yesterday's video, and I would say 185 of them were for Lawrence Taylor. Look, I know Lawrence Taylor is arguably the best football player ever. He is probably, he is. I will agree. He's the best Giant, he's the best player to ever wear Giants blue. So if you want to type 56 in the comment section, you're wrong. But some of you guys said I deserved a jail sentence for even asking the question. I didn't even give you my answer. Lawrence Taylor is the GOAT, but my GOAT is Eli Manning because that's who I saw play football. Another super chat from Tutu. What up, my guy? He said, $10. I appreciate the support. I'll never be able to play in the NFL. I'll be fine, suspended, and ejection in every game. If a player's not wearing a same colored jersey, as mine on the field, he'll be my victims. He'll be Tutu. You sound like a pretty good middle linebacker. That's the mindset I want Blake Martinez and Tay Crowder to have this season. Take the offensive players' heads off this year. Lay the wood. Use the hit stick. Be dirty. Play till the echo of the whistle. You don't have to stop at the whistle. Just stop at the echo of the whistle so you don't get the 15-yard penalty for unnecessary roughness. Lions talk with Micro Mike, that's you, bro. You're the GOAT. I appreciate you. We do have some Giants news to get to. Well, somewhat Giants news because James Bradbury signed a one-year, $10 million contract with $7.5 million guaranteed and the other two and a half able to earn that through incentives by winning the Super Bowl and making the Pro Bowl and all that stuff. But he signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. I loved James Bradbury yesterday. Today, I hate him because he's wearing that damn green jersey. So if you hate the Eagles, and since James Bradbury signed with the Eagles, go down and type F Philly in the comment section. I just want to see the whole chats lit up with F Philly. I hate the Eagles. I thought I hated the Dallas Cowboys more than the Eagles, but I believe that I do hate the Eagles more, and especially with James Bradbury now on that team, 
it stings. It stings the nostrils. It really does. I'm upset. I love James Bradbury. I would have been cool if he went to any other team in the NFL or any other team outside the Cowboys and the Eagles because if he went to Washington, who really gives a damn? But he went to the Eagles. So I want to see a whole bunch of F Phillies in the comments section. I'll give some shout-outs. The Hammy, Steve Marks, Karen, Pixie Dust, Michael. Alex Roberts calling him a snake. That's a little rough, but yeah, it is definitely a stab in the back. I think he wants two shots to play the Giants every single year because the Giants cut bait with him. Wolf Z says F Philly. Mikey's Gaming World says F Philly. Cha says F those birds. Eric Seabrook says F Bradbury and F the Eagles. I'm unblocking that. We're cool with that coming through all day. F the Eagles as well from Wolf Z. Another super chat from my guy, Tutu Azuri. Let's ride. We'll get to that in a second. Mr. New York Stadium, BD4, one of the most faithful watchers on the show. You're a real one, says F Philly. Michael Breer says F Philly. Tutu, he says he's six foot four, 248 pounds, 36 inch arms length, 8% body fat. He's a fifth year All Pro, first team, two time World Cup winner, defensive rookie of the year, two time MVP runner up, and nightmare for every OT all day. This guy's a monster. Tutu, send me some highlights. Hit me up on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore. Send me a video of you playing. I'd really love to watch it. I play flag football for fun. I love to just go out there and compete. I'd love to watch you play rugby. That's badass, man. I appreciate you supporting the show. I remember when I first started doing Giants videos last year, back in June, you used to comment them all the time, and now you're back because you're a real one. But everybody, give me a follow on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore. I'll pepper that in the chat a couple of times. Everybody that follows me on today's show, I'll make sure to give you a follow back and I will verbally shout you out on, to, on today's show. Give you a follow back and I'll give you a shout out. Trying to up my Twitter presence, my boss, James Yoder, he says I don't have enough Twitter clout and I don't want to hear from him about that anymore. So help me keep my job and keep my boss off my ass. Give me a follow on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. I'm trying to get to 13 and a half hundred followers today. We also got two mailbags on today's show, one of them being the first segment of today's show. So if you want your question answered or if you want to be featured on the show, just go in the comment section, use hashtag Giants. You've got to include that in the question or our software won't be able to put your picture and your profile name up on screen. If you use hashtag Giants, you've got a great chance to get on today's show and I'll answer your question. Or if you want to be like today's MVP Tutu, my guy who super chatted 20 bucks already, every super chat guarantees you to be on the show. It's kind of like the fast pass. You skip the line, you get on the show. But if you want to be featured on today's show, use hashtag Giants in the comments section. Speaking of the show, if you're ready to get things rolling, get things underway, go down and like this video right now. Show some love. Liking this video tells YouTube that Giants fans are enjoying this, so it'll push this video to more Giants fans. And we want to grow this channel to be the largest Giants YouTube channel there is. We got 132 people watching right now, 39 likes. Can we get to 50 likes? I think we can. 69 would be cool. Shout out to Tom Downey. He might get too excited if we get 69 likes. 40 likes. Keep on hitting that like video as I tell you what we got coming up in today's show. Is Kadarius Tony not at OTAs? We'll break that down. Then we'll break down What's happened through two days of OTAs for the New York Giants? Media was not allowed, so there hasn't been many highlights posted. There's been some pictures, but they've done some write-ups. Giants, social media guys have done write-ups on Giants.com. I'll break down everything that they had to say in, on those articles, and I'll let you know and keep you up to date with everything that's happening in OTAs. And the Giants, they made eight roster moves. Cut four guys, signed four guys. We'll break that down. And also, we got two live mailbag so if you want to be featured on the mailbag use hashtag giants to get your question in on today's show marshall what's the ceiling for the giants this year alex roberts i appreciate your question he's typed hashtag giants alan howard just joined the chat my guy what's going on brody the hammy just gave me a follow on twitter that's what's up all righty and uh tutu we'll get to that super chat after the first mailbag i appreciate you my guy but let's get to it. Let's talk some New York football giants. Welcome in to New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. We're about to get into a mailbag where I answer subscribers' questions, which came from our live show on Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. 
make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on. Because if you want to get in on these shows, you got to be a part of the live shows. So join us, turn your noties on so you never miss a beat. And you got to be a subscriber because we only show love to the subs. So thank you to everybody that subscribed. We're almost at 9,000 subscribers. If you haven't yet, go down right now and hit that big red button. Like my guy Hixie Dust has. He's one of the most loyal subs on the channel. I love when he submits his questions. We chop it up on Twitter all the time. He said, I heard Shane Lemieux is practicing. I thought he was done. What are your thoughts on his progress? Yes, he has been participating at Giants OTAs earlier this week. They practiced on Monday and Tuesday. He still has an uphill, uphill battle. He's going to look, looks like he might be ready, though, for preseason and training camp. That's a big win for the Giants because with Lemieux, Max Garcia, uh, and Azudu, the rookie they just drafted out of North Carolina, this is going to be a great camp battle to be the starting left guard at Giants camp. I love what the Giants have done by bringing in a whole bunch of bodies to just compete because at the end of the day, I want the best players to win. These are some OT, OTA notes and takeaways from day one. And Shane Lemieux practice, that's big. You have Lemieux, Lemieux uh, Josh Azudu, and Max Garcia competing for that left guard spot. I want the best player to win, and the competition is something I live off. I thrive off competition, and competition brings the best out of everybody, so hopefully the best man wins the job at the left guard spot. Appreciate your question, Hixie. Alex Roberts, what's up, man? Marshall, what's the ceiling for the Giants this year? Ceiling? I think they can compete in the NFC East. I think that is the ceiling. I did a record prediction video a couple of days ago, the day after the NFL schedule dropped. And I had the Giants going 9-8. and eight. I had them at 10-7, and seven, but then I thought to myself, maybe I'm being too much of a homer. But then I saw that the Giants had the easiest schedule in the NFL based off 2022 win totals in Vegas. They have an easy schedule. They don't play a lot of tough teams. They have a tough early part of the schedule, but then it gets easier as the season goes on. I don't expect the Giants to come blazing out of the gates. The new offensive coordinator, new head coach, new defensive coordinator. It's going to take a little bit of time to hit their stride, but if they can compete in the NFC East all the way to week 18, I think that'd be the ceiling, and I think it's definitely possible for them to be in the contention to win the division. Appreciate you, Alex. Austin Johnson, 44. What up, my guy? Did the Giants mismanage the James Bradbury situation? Sucks that he went to Philly. Hashtag Giants. Hashtag F Philly. If you hate the Eagles, you can go down in the comment section and type F Philly. And I do think the Giants somewhat mismanaged the Bradbury situation. Because look, once a team or once an NFL, once every team in the NFL finds out that you're looking to trade a player like the Giants were with James Bradbury, once word gets out, it's kind of like, yo, I won't trade for him if you don't trade for him. And I won't trade for him if you don't trade for him because he's going to get cut eventually. We knew if the Giants couldn't trade him, they were going to cut him. And ideally, the Giants would have traded James Bradbury in January or February before word got out league-wide that they were trying to move on from him. But, unfortunately, the Giants had to fire that one guy named Dave Gettleman, so they had to hire a new general manager, so they really missed the window, in my opinion, to trade James Bradbury. It sucks that they got nothing in return, but they did clear $12 million in cap space. I would have loved to get a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round pick, but that wasn't on the table. I do think they mismanaged it, but I also think they did the best they could have done under the circumstances they were given. Look, James Bradbury signed with the Philadelphia Eagles today. That felt like someone stabbed me in the back. Well, like one of my best friends going to play for another team. That sucked. I loved James Bradbury yesterday. Today, I don't love him. But type F Philly in the comments section. Let's get the comments rolling and full of F Phillies. I hate the Eagles. If you love the Giants, you probably hate the Eagles. But since James Bradbury signed with the Birds, go down and type F Philly. The Hammy, my dude, what up? Who's your favorite player currently on the roster? Man, my favorite player? I don't really even know if I have a favorite player. But the player that I want to succeed more than any other person on this roster is Daniel Jones. And that's because I have love for him because he's a quarterback. Quarterback is the toughest position in all of sports, in my opinion. And Daniel Jones has been dealt a shitty hand, to be quite frank. His offensive coordinators following uh, Pat Shermer have been terrible. Jason Garrett, Freddie Kitchens, bad. His offensive line, arguably the worst in the NFL since he's been drafted. He's had no playmakers. Saquon Barkley's been hurt. 
Sterling Shepard's been hurt. Kadarius Toney, who they spent a first-round pick, hasn't worked out. I still think he's going to be great. Kenny Galladay was terrible this past year. There's been a lot of injuries for Daniel Jones. So maybe he is my favorite player, but at the end of the day, he's the guy on the Giants. I want to see succeed more than anybody else because I have love for him. I respect his craft. I respect how hard he works. He's a tough SOB, and if he's good, the Giants are going to be good, so though that, that's kind of where I stand on that one. Appreciate you, Hammy. And Hammy, I know you're already subscribed because I always see you in the comments section, but if you're watching today's video, one of our 160 live current viewers, and you haven't subbed, go down and do that right now. Join the squad. We've been growing like crazy. We've gained 1.5 thousand subs in the last 28 days, and I want to keep the train rolling. I want to get to 9,000 subscribers by the end of today. So go down right now. Hit that big red button. We're 146 subs away. And if you're like, why would I subscribe? Look, daily free videos around the latest Giants news and rumors. We go live every week. We pride ourselves off on being the most interactive YouTube channel that covers the Giants. So join the squad. Hit that big red button right now. Wolf Z, my brother, what up? Giants out of these teams, oh, out of these teams, we should beat Jags, Texans, Bears. Which game is a clown show we have every year we lose? Yes, we should beat the Jags. We should beat the Texans, and we should beat the Bears. <laughs> My producer, he's a Bears fan. He just gave me a thumbs down. Under the table, I'm giving him a finger up, if you know what I'm saying. The game that I had trouble picking, that the Giants are a better team. They should win. But like you said, every year a team loses a game, they're supposed to win. And I think that could be the Detroit Lions game for the New York Giants. The Lions... They play really hard. They had a terrible record last year, but they're one of the hardest playing teams in the NFL. I think they got better than they were last year. The Giants should 100% beat the Detroit Lions, but I could see that being a game that they trip up on, not because they took them for granted and not because the Giants aren't going to play hard, but when you have a coach that likes to eat kneecaps, it's going to be tough to beat that team, and I think in year two, the Lions could shock some folks. Appreciate you, though, brother. Ryan Jenkins, do you think in – do you think an UDFA, nah, that, that doesn't even sound good. Do you think a UDFA will make the Giants roster? I do. I have a couple of guys that I think will make the roster. I love what Jay Sean Corbin did in rookie minicamp. He benefits from playing in a running back room that's not stacked. The only running backs I think that make this roster for sure are Matt Breida and Saquon Barkley. Then you have Gary Brightwell. You have Antonio Williams. Uh, Antonio Williams, the, I think that's, I'm, I might be messing up the name. I think that's right. Antonio Williams, the running back, they signed from the Buffalo Bills. And then J, J. Sean Corbin. He's going to be able to produce on special teams as a punt returner, kick returner. He's a hard runner. I like what he does as a player. And he's not like Saquon. Not saying that's a bad thing, but he likes to stick his foot in the ground, get north and south, and attack the hole. He's a one-cut runner. Kind of reminds me of someone that once wore number 44 for the New York football Giants. But what about this question? Appreciate my producer cooking this up for me. Who do you think makes the Giants 53-man roster? Is it going to be Gary Brightwell, the second-year player, the fifth-round pick from the 2021 NFL Draft at Arizona, or will it be the undrafted free agent from 2022, Jay Sean Corbin, who played for Florida State last year? Type JC for Jay Sean Corbin or GB for Gary Brightwell. I also want to ask you guys to show some love and give us a follow over on Rumble. Rumble.com slash TV. Look, we're growing like crazy here on YouTube, but we're also growing to platforms that you guys use. Rumble, it is just like YouTube, except a little more edgy. And I like that as a New Yorker. I like to keep things, you know, toeing the line a little bit. I know you do too. They've also got a lot of sports content, news content, politics, and tech. And my favorite feature is, it's kind of like, even though it's a video platform app, you can watch videos like it's a podcast. You can close out the app, and the audio will continue to roll. You can put it in your pocket, go answer a text message, and the audio will continue to roll. You don't have to pay a premium fee like you have to do so on YouTube to unlock that feature. But show us some love. We're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers over there. Hit us up, rumble.com slash TV. Anthony Raraza, what up, my dude? How many sack do you think KT will have? Hopefully he's only got one sack, but... I do think he has potential to have double-digit sacks this season. We saw Aziz Ojolari have eight sacks last year. And I think Kayvon Thibodeau is a much more developed and refined pass rusher than Aziz is. Aziz is a beast, but I really do believe Kayvon Thibodeau could win Defensive Rookie of the Year this year. I could see 10 sacks. Micah Parsons had 13 sacks last year. I could see Kayvon Thibodeau hovering around 
eight to 11 sacks. I think 10 is a great number. It's a round number. It's my favorite number ever. Shout out to Eli. But I think 10 is the sweet spot for where Kayvon Thibodeau will be once the season ends this year. Appreciate you, Anthony. Sam, I am. Do you think Cordell Flott will start as a rookie? LSU fan here. All right, we got some boots on the ground, Petey. And he was a beast the last two years as a starter. He did play good. I like his versatility. I like what Cordell Flott can do in the slot. He's about six foot one, a little bit lighter in the pounds area, only 190 pounds. But if he can grow into his body, I think he can do more than just be a slot corner. I think he can produce as an outside corner. And how thin this room is, the Giants did just sign two players in Kennedy and Dorsey. We'll break that down in a second. But if Robinson struggles or a Dory Jackson gets hurt, Cordell Flott could be asked to play on the outside. I like the way he competes. He's a fierce competitor. He called Wandale Robinson the best receiver he faced last year. Wandale Robinson said Cordell Flott was the best slot corner he played all year long. So somewhat of a bromance going on right there. But I like what Flott brings to this team. He's got extremely long arms. So that's what you can kind of see the Giants' DB room is transitioning to. They're looking for long, athletic cornerbacks that can play that press man type of style. Wink Martindale likes his corners to get in the face of receivers and Flott in the slot. And I think down the line, if he bulks up a little bit, can produce on the outside. I appreciate your question, bro. I'm a big Cordell Flott fan. Anything goes 10. Do you think Daniel Jones will be the starter next season? Look, that's the golden question that everyone's asking. And I think the only person that can answer that in this world is Daniel Jones. And he's not going to be able to answer that with his words. He's going to have to answer that with how he plays this year. As a competitor, the only thing you ask, and as an athlete, is to be able to control your own destiny. And that's what Daniel Jones can do this year. If he plays great, the Giants will re-sign him, and he will be the Giants franchise quarterback. If he plays bad, he's not going to be re-signed. Re they didn't pick up his fifth-year option, and he won't be on the Giants next year. As a competitor, do what you can do. Control what you can control. Daniel Jones does that this year. I think he could be back in 2023 as the Giants' starting QB. But I want to hear from all Giants fans in the comments section right now. Where do you stand on this? Do you think Daniel Jones will be the starter in 2023 for the New York Football Giants? Go down in the comment section, type Y for yes, or if you don't think he's going to be the guy, maybe they go out, they draft a rookie, they do something, he plays bad, whatever it may be. If you don't think he's going to be the guy, go down in the comment section and type N for no. Last question, two to another super chat. You're a real one, my guy. He says, I'm a pro defensive rugby player myself. Defense always wins championships. It's not always about individual stats and accomplishments. It's about disrupting opposing offenses and picking them apart as a team win. I love that you said that. Champion off Defense wins championships. Offense wins regular season games. As Giants fans, we know that. If we just go back to the recent memory of when the Giants beat the Patriots in 2007, and they beat them in 2011, that Giants defense was special. They were loaded with talent. You can win games by having a great defense. I agree 100% with that, and I think the Giants defense is going to take a step this year. They added some big players in Kayvon Thibodeau, Cordell Fly. I know there's some question marks about the secondary, but I think the pass rush that's going to be able to be generated by the talent they have and the schemes that they use under Wink Martindale, I think this defense is going to take a big step. 2-2, you're a real one in an MVP of today's show. Back to this question, though, and let's get some shout-outs. Will Daniel Jones be the Giants' starting quarterback in 2023? My Aunt Nancy says no. One of the biggest Giants fans I know. She's been to more Giants games than me, and that's upsetting. But she says no. Gritty Guapo says yes, my guy. Carl Banks says no. Mr. NY Stadium says yes. Surfino says I think KT is on his way out of Big Blue. I don't think the Giants are trading Kadarius Tony. Even though he's not there, it does not seem like they are. Tony B says yes. Surfino says no. Christian says hell yes. My dad, Fred Green, says yes. Of course he does. He is the most optimistic Giant fan I have. I know, and I love that because sometimes I need that. Sometimes I can be a little bit too negative. Another super chat from Tutu, the MVP of today's show by far. Someone challenged this guy. Don't let him just walk away with the MVP of today's show. But he said, contrary to the NFL, we don't wear any helmet, body pads, or diapers. We make a living by hurting people and making them bleed for money, these guys are running bounty gates, Petey. Is, is Sean Payton your head coach? Your coach is paying you more to make the other team bleed? 
Tutu, you're built different. You're tougher than me. I play flag football because I don't want to get hit anymore. I just want my flag to be pulled. I got tired of getting hit. But Tutu, I appreciate you, bro. You're the MVP of today's show, and you're walking right into the Giants now. Ring of Honor, you're a real one. What about this, though? Give me a follow on Twitter. I'll make sure to put that my link to my Twitter in the comment section of today's video. It's right there in the live chat. Click on it. Give me a follow at the end of the show. I will make sure to give a shout out to everyone that gave me a follow on Twitter. And I'll give you a follow back. A little two for one special. And guess who's back? Back again. Two, two. Another super chat. My guy, what up? I was working out with J JJP when I was 12 years old. Is that Jason Pierre Paul? Jason Pierre Paul? You catch my drift? Eight fingers. I was working out with JPP when I was 12 years old in Jersey, Josie, and Coach Spags and a bunch of other Italian oversized teenagers, and we idolized Coach Coughlin. I love Coach Coughlin. He's probably the best Giants head coach ever behind Bill, Bill Parcells, maybe? I mean, two Super Bowls against Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. Tom Coughlin is a Giants legend. Um, I love what he did with the Giants. He changed what he did. Yes, he said JPP. Right, sorry. I appreciate you. I knew what you were saying. Shout out JPP. But yes, Tutu, look, you're a badass. I, when I grow up, I want to be like you in my next life. All right, we've got 169 people watching right now, 72 likes. Let's get to 100 likes on today's video. But let's get into the latest Giants new. PD, are we good? All righty, let's do it. We're going to be talking about the latest New York football Giants news and rumors right now. What up, Giants fans? You're watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, and we've got a jam-packed show for you all today. We're going to touch on the latest rumors. Is Kadarius Tony at Giants OTA? Some people are saying yes. Some people are saying no. We'll break all that down in a second. And then I'll give you my takeaways from OTAs. Media has not been there, but there's been some people that wrote articles. We'll, get, we'll say, uh, fill you in and let you know what's going on over there in East Rutherford. And then the Giants, they make eight. Roster moves, we'll break all that down in today's show. And we'll actually start with that. The Giants, they've made eight roster moves. They cut four players, they signed four players. They started early in the morning. About 6.30 Eastern this morning, they signed two defensive backs that had ties to Wink Martindale, two former corners that spent time with the Baltimore Ravens. It's kind of been the theme of the offseason. The Giants, they're going to go after guys that their coordinators are familiar with and know stuff about. Art Stapleton, we got some tweets to run through. He said the Giants are signing cornerback Maurice Kennedy, some secondary help in wake of James Bradbury's departure. Kennedy has experience playing the boundary in Wink Martindale's defense with the Ravens. He's six foot one, 190 pounds, good length, and was with the Cowboys last year and also spent time with the Jets in 2019. He also went on to say Kennedy missed time last season with the Cowboys due to a concussion, which led to a stint on injured reserve. He should compete for time as an outside corner and in the mix as well with the Giants' younger cornerback options. He turns 28 later this month and also has flexibility to play in the slot. Worth a flyer, worked out on Tuesday for sure. The Giants should be adding anybody that impresses them to come and compete in this secondary group because it's honestly a little bit thin right now. And it was so thin, they went out and signed another cornerback. Dan Duggan was on the news this morning at 7.12 a.m., 6.12 Eastern, or 8.12 Eastern. I don't know. I'm not good at time zones. Add another former Ravens. The Giants add another former Ravens cornerback, Khalil Dorsey. Dorsey appeared in six games last year, mostly on special teams as an undrafted, or he did that in 2020, and then missed last season with an injury. And these are all of the moves the Giants actually made today. They signed Jalen Holmes, a defensive end, Henry Black, a safety, Maurice Kennedy, a cornerback, and Khalil Dorsey, another cornerback. So you add a safety, you add an edge rusher, and you add two cornerbacks. These are guys that are going to be there to fill out the roster for the Giants to get to 90 people. These guys are going to compete to make that 53-man roster. And by signing these four players, they also had to waive four guys. So no longer will Trent Harris Brian Lewerke, the preseason legend, or Raymond Johnson, or Jordan Mosley be on the New York football Giants. But with Kennedy and Khalil Dorsey now on the roster, this is what the Giants' def cornerback depth chart looks like. I still have Odori Jackson as cornerback one, Aaron Robinson as cornerback two. As of now, I have Darnay Holmes as a starting slot corner, 
But I do think Cordell Flott is going to have an opportunity to compete in that role and potentially be the starter. I got Rodarius Williams as Dory Jackson's backup. Then I got Jay Williams as Aaron Robin, Jaron Williams as the jo Aaron Robinson's backup. And then I got Kennedy and Dorsey behind those two guys. Look, I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants go out and make another move for a corner. I'm not sure you can realistically count on a Dory Jackson. Aaron Robinson, Cordell Flott, Darnay Holmes, Rodarius Williams, and Jaron Williams to be your starting corners in the NFL in 2022. I love Adoree Jackson. He's a good cornerback, but he's had injuries dating back to USC. He was injured with the Titans a lot, and he missed a couple games for the Giants last year. Right now, if I were to answer my own question, I would rate my confidence in the Giants cornerback room at about a five. I'm not one, I'm not panicking, but I'm not overly confident. I don't think it's going to be a great team, but this team is going to be built off producing pressure on blitzes and various schemes on getting to the quarterback. So those corners aren't going to hopefully have to cover as long, but I want to hear from you. What's your confidence level in the Giants cornerback room right now? Scale it one to 10. One being you're not confident, 10, you think this is the best cornerback room, the next New York pass defense. And make sure if this is your first time watching a New York Giants Now video by Chat Sports, you go down right now and hit that big red button. Because I'm going to make this promise to you all, Giants fans. Nobody on YouTube that covers the Giants will be putting out more content than we will here on Giants Now throughout the summer. June, July, it's the dog days of the NFL calendar. But I'm going to make a promise that we will still put out a video every single day when you wake up in the morning there will be a new video for you to watch on the latest giants news and rumors so if you want more giants content in your life go down right now hit that big red button and help us get to 9,000 subscribers probably why you clicked on today's video is Kadarius tony at giants otas look i cannot report that he's there but i also cannot report that he's not there Look, Zach Rosenblatt on Twitter yesterday, one of the best Giants beat reporters in the game. Shout out to him. He tweeted this out following day two of OTAs. He said, from the Giants OTAs in day two, he said some notes. They worked on the intermediate game, so midfield. David Sills, the Sills Army, shout out to those guys, had the play of the day catching a deep ball from Tyrod Taylor. Kayvon Thibodeau tipped a pass that Xavier McKinney intercepted and still no mention of Kadarius Toney. That was at 2.03 p.m. Then Kadarius Tony, two hours earlier, which was during Giants OTAs and when Giants players were on the field, tweeted, I watched Greed set so many people back 100 emoji. Could he have been tweeting from the Giants trading room? Sure. The film room? Sure. But I am almost certain that Kadarius Tony is not participating at least or on the field at voluntary workouts. I went through 200 pictures. 200 different pictures that the Giants social media team posted to their website. Click, 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 all 200 of them. And Kadarius Toney was not in any of the pictures. And the Giants social media team just posted another 90 pictures, 90 pictures to represent every single player that's on the roster. Half of them were pictures from OTAs. Kadarius Toney, it was picture from last year when he was wearing the Color Rush jersey. Look, if they had a picture of Kadarius Toney, they would show it off because it's been a topic of conversation all offseason long. I believe that if Kadarius Toney was there, the social media team would be letting fans know. If he's not there, because we don't want to say he's not, if he is, if he's not there, that's a problem in my opinion. You weren't there for workouts. You weren't there for minicamp. Voluntary. All these are voluntary. But he's voluntarily making the Giants worse by not being there, and that's why I have a problem with it. Him not being there doesn't make himself better. It doesn't make Daniel Jones better. It doesn't make life for Mike Kafka or Brian Dable better. It makes everybody worse. And when you already had a lackluster rookie year like Kadarius Tony did, where he only had 39 catches, where he only had 420 yards, didn't score a single touchdown, as a competitor and as a wide receiver in the NFL, where you can make $30 million per year, if you're about your bag and if you're about your paper, you should be doing whatever it takes to secure that next contract. Because we've said it, the NFL stands for not for long. If you're not bought all the way in, you're almost all, you're on your way out. I love Kadarius Tony. I don't want to get that misconstrued. I believe he has all pro talent. He has the potential to be one of the most electric playmakers in the NFL. But he has to buy in. He has to show me and every fan of the New York football giants that he cares and bleeds New York Giants blue. Because, yes, it's voluntary, 
but he's voluntarily making the Giants worse by not being there. But I want to ask you this question. I'm typing P for a problem if he's not there, because I do. I think it's a big deal. I don't think it's something that you should just not think about. I think as a Giants fan, like me, you should be worried if Kadarius Toney is not there. But I want to hear from you. Kadarius Toney, not at voluntary OTAs. Is it a problem? Type P for problem. Or if it's not a big deal in your opinion, that's fine. I understand that logic of thinking as well. Just go down in the comment section and type N for no big deal. What is a big deal is us posting Giants content now over on Rumble. Shout out to them for sponsoring today's show. Look, our content's now being posted over there, so you can watch it on multiple platforms. Rumble.com slash NYGiantsTV. We're trying to get to 2,000 followers over there. I need your help. I'll put the link in the comments and description of today's video. Click on it. Follow, show some love. People always ask me, yo, Marsh, how can I support the show? Go give us a follow over on Rumble, rumble.com slash TV. Last segment on today's show, we'll go through a recap of day one and day two of Giants OTAs. Media has not, or some media, most media, if you don't work for the Giants, you haven't been allowed in to Giants OTAs. They've been posting pictures, and they've also been posting post-practice reports on their website. I did the work for you. I went and read all 7,000 words, and I broke it down into a couple of pieces. So we'll break it down on day one. What happened on day one of Giants OTAs? Daniel Jones and Colin Johnson connected multiple times. Colin Johnson played last year a good amount because of the lack of talent the Giants had in the wide receiver room. And Jones seems to have developed nice chemistry with him. The two connected on several passes throughout practice, including a couple of impressive catches by Johnson in the corner of the end zone during 11-on-11s. Big news here. Shane Lemieux, the guard, practiced on Monday and participated in team drills. He was placed on injured reserve after suffering a knee injury in week one last season, but appears to be making progress towards being ready for the upcoming season. Then the undrafted free agent out of Kentucky, Yusuf Corker, has been a star so far in OTAs. The safety made the defensive play of the day on day one of OTAs. The former Kentucky Wildcat intercepted a pass, which he then took the other way that would have been a significant game. Another rookie that's shining is Daniel Bellinger, the fourth-round tight end. Towards the end of practice, he made the offensive play of the day and made an impressive grab in the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. Antonio Williams, he also had a big day. These showed an explosive first step, and during 11-on-11s, the former Bills running back also showed off his hands and made it a one-handed pass, a one-handed catch. Also, Saquon Barkley, who has eight career receiving touchdowns, caught two touchdowns through the air in practice from close range. The Giants spent most of their time inside the 10-yard line during 7-on-7 and 11-on-11 drills as Dave and Kafka instill the new, install the new offense. Darius Slayton also caught two touchdowns, as well as Wandale Robinson and Jay Sean Corbin. And Sexy Dexy Dexter Lawrence almost pit, picked off a pass, tipped it up in the air, but, did, but couldn't come down to it. Day two. That's where more rookies, I felt like, got their names on paper and started to show people what they can do. And Wandale Robinson, according to Giants.com and their write-up, balled out. He was returning punts and showed a great chemistry already with Daniel Jones. Wandale and DJ, they hooked up multiple times, and I'm not talking about that hooked up. The wide receiver has displayed a quick twitch during OTAs. The rookie is already a frequent target of Daniel Jones as the two, the two connected on several passes during 11-on-11. He also had a deep catch on, on the on the sideline, toe, toe drag swag. Robinson, he's going to be a good player. And Kayvon Thibodeau had a nice deflection at the line of scrimmage. Ball popped in the air. Xavier McKinney caught it and went running the other way. And then David Sills and the Sills Army is back. He made a nice couple of catches, caught a deep touchdown on the sideline from Tyrod Taylor, which was arguably the play of the day on day two. Adoree Jackson. Also had a really nice pass breakup in 11-on-11s. <coughs> Excuse me. Almost picked it off and went the other way for six. I expect him to have a big year. And Darnay Holmes also had a really good day as well, breaking out multiple passes. And Darian Beavers, they said he looked good in pass coverage. A lot of Giants rookies are getting praises at OTAs. I like that. I like for the rookies to be installed early and make some plays and get the fans excited. The Giants are on a break of OTAs right now. They had practice on the 16th and 17th of May to yesterday and the day before, but now they have a break. Tomorrow they'll be back on the 19th, and they have two more practices on the 23rd and 24th of May, then the 26th, 
and then a little bit more of a break. And then from May 31st to June 3rd, they will finish up their OTA sec section of the offseason. And then mandatory minicamp will be here in June, from June 7th to June 9th. And that's where I expect to definitely see Kadarius Toney, Kenny Galladay, and every single player on this Giants roster. It's mandatory at that point, so they better be there, or they're going to be having to be paying a pretty hefty fine displayed down from John Mara and the New York Football Giants. Look. Talking about real football, not news and rumors. I'm talking real football. Yeah, it's practice. We're talking about practice. But, man, it feels good to talk about it. If you're just ready for the NFL season, spam G-Men in the comments section. I want to see a 1,000 G-Men's down there. because I'm ready, and I know you're ready as well. So go down and spam G-Men in the comments section. I also want to say thank you, and I appreciate everybody that's clicked on today's video. You're a real one. If you made it this far in the video, if you give me a follow on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore, I'll make sure to give you a follow back. Spam it in the comment section, fellas. G-men, G-men, G-men. Hixie Dust, Joseph, Surf Seth, uh, Serafino, Joseph, Tyrone, Bobby, Michael, Joseph, Tyrone, Hixie. What up, man? A whole bunch of G-Men's in the comment section. Love to see that. I'm just excited talking about real football, man. I eat, breathe, and sleep Giants football, and we're about to get into another mailbag where I answer your questions around the latest New York football Giants news and rumors. So if you want to be featured on the show, we'll, be make, we'll uh, make sure you use hashtag Giants in the comment section. That way you can get on the show. Everybody that super chats who Tutu has once again – been the MVP of today's show, and a couple more Super Chats. We'll get those in on the show. But if you want to be featured, guaranteed, Super Chat, or you have to wait in the line and use hashtag Giants. Are we good on questions? My producer says we could use a couple more questions. My dad is also saying, let's go Rangers. I went to my first playoff hockey game a couple of days ago. It was badass. I enjoyed it. Let's go Rangers. But let's do it. <clears throat> let's do it. Let's do another Giants rumors mailbag. What up, Giants fans? You're watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, and we're about to get into a mailbag where I answer all of the subscribers' questions, which aired on our live show on Wednesday. Make sure you're a subscriber so you can join our live show and have your question answered. We only answer subscribers' questions. And have your notifications turned on so you can join us next time or next week when we go live on Wednesday. <clears throat> Gritty Guapo. Wow, I love that name, and I love seeing you in the comments section. One of the most faithful guys always tuning in. Do you think Bradbury joined the Eagles to piss off the Giants? I do. I don't know if it was to piss off the Giants, but I think he was pissed off by the way things transpired. The Giants, they did what's best for them, which was to hold on for onto Bradbury as long as they could. Hopefully a trade were to come. It didn't come. But they held on to him past the NFL draft, past the NFL free agency period, where the money had dried up. But look, he's still got a sizable deal. $10 million, seven and a half guaranteed. I love James Bradbury, but it does suck that he went to the Eagles. Felt like kind of a stab in the back. But if I was a competitor, I played in the NFL and a team cut me, I'd love to go play on a team that played him twice. Now the Giants are going to do that. They're going to play Bradbury twice. Good luck to you, James Bradbury, covering Kadarius Toney and Wandale Robinson. Flag, skin, flag spin, my guy. What up, bro? Do you think the Giants will sign another corner Maybe like Xavier Rhodes. I do. I don't know if Xavier Rhodes is the guy. I'm sure they'll add another more, couple more corners to this depth chart. Xavier Rhodes played pretty solid last year for the Indianapolis Colts. Well, kind of washed at the end of his time <clears throat> with the Minnesota Vikings, but kind of had a little bit of a resurgence with the Indianapolis Colts. I wouldn't hate if the Giants went and to go pick him up, add some better in leadership to this young group of DBs, but I don't know if he's the guy the Giants would go after. But I'd be a fan if they did win and made that move. Appreciate your flag spin. Daniel Jones, eight. Giants, signed Jadavion Clowney. Okay. Um, if salary cap mode was turned off like we were playing Madden, sure. I loved what Jadavion Clowney did last year for the Cleveland Browns. My producer, he runs our Browns channel. What do you have, nine sacks last year? Is that a career high? Not, nine and a half. So he's a half sack away from his career high. He missed three games, still had nine sacks. His life was easier being on the opposite side of Miles Garrett. And just because he's available this late into the NFL calendar and free agency doesn't mean he's going to take a pay cut. 
This is someone that's usually taken a while to sign his deal or sign in free agency. He's taken longer than normal. Look, if he wants to come and play for a million dollars or two million dollars, sure. But Clowney, he's, he's going to be trying to secure that bag. And I predict that he re-signs with the Cleveland Browns. But I'll leave it up to all the viewers watching today's show. If you were Joe Shane, would you go out and sign Jadavion Clowney? Type S for sign, type P for pass. I would pass because you don't have the money, but also because, look, Giants aren't in win-now mode. If they were, sure. But I want Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari to get the bulk of the reps at the edge rusher spot. But let me know what you think. Type S for sign, type P for pass. Hixie Dust, my dude, what up? Giants LT loves Fox, but we have a decent amount of options at edge rusher. What are your thoughts on him making the roster? Yes, Lawrence Taylor, the go to the New York football Giants in the NFL, spoke really loudly of Tom and Fox, the undrafted free agent out of North Carolina. LT also went to North Carolina. So maybe there's a little bit of a bias there. Shout out to the Tar Heel bros. But look, when you're an edge rusher and the go to the edge rusher's Lawrence Taylor sings the praises of you, I think that's pretty damn cool and definitely noteworthy. I like Tom and Fox a lot. Played six years at North Carolina, 47 total games. Had like 44 tackles for loss, 30 and a half total sacks. This is someone that produced in college. Didn't test that well at his pro day or the NFL combine. That's why he, went, why he went undrafted. But look, you come in, prove that you can get after the quarterback, there's definitely a good shot that he could make this roster. After Quincy Roche and Ellerson Smith, there's a good chance to be a backup pass rusher on this team. I think O'Shane Zimenez is going to get the boot, and maybe it's for Tom and Fox to make this roster. Appreciate you, Hixie. Cool guy Cam, do you think Julian Love will have a big year as a starter? I do. I think this is when Julian Love is going to be known as a world as, as a wor worldwide name in the NFL. A fourth round pick out of Notre Dame. This is someone that can do a little bit of everything in the defensive backfield. He can play slot corner. He can play strong safety. He can play free safety. And in a pinch, if you had to, he could play outside corner. I love the versatility he brings. And I think in this scheme that Martindale's going to run, he's really going to thrive in that. He can be your single high free safety. He can come and be that slot corner. He can be your third safety as well if you want Dane Belton to get reps. I like Julian Love a lot. I love the, the talent he has and the way he plays the game. He's a hard worker. He's a leader. And I think this year he will become a household name in the NFL as a starting safety for the New York football Giants. I'm all in on Julian Love having a breakout season. But give me a guy on the Giants... <clears throat> you think is going to break out? Is it going to be Julian Love, Kadarius Toney, Kenny Galladay, Quincy Roche, Tay Crowder? There's a lot of guys you could go with. I think Xavier McKinney is going to be a pro bowler this year, but I do think Julian Love is also going to have a big year, but I want to hear from you Giants fans. What player do you think is going to have a breakout season? And if you haven't done it yet, what are you waiting for? Go down right now, hit that big red button, and turn on your notifications. Because look, we started a first commenter club, and the same guy keeps on winning every single time. I want someone to defeat him. So turn on your notifications, join the first commenter club, and look, free daily videos around the latest Giants news and rumors. If you haven't yet, hit that big red button. Help us get to 9,000 subscribers. That's just It's awesome to say, 9,000 subscribers. We're almost there. Anthony Raza, what up, bro? I see Gates being a tragedy to our cap. Cap, I think he will be cut. Yes, if you cut Nick Gates, it would save about $2.5 million. He had that gruesome injury last year where it didn't even know, nobody knew at the time if he would ever be able to play in the NFL again. That's how gruesome of an injury it is. Supposedly he's ahead of schedule, but I really don't see him playing football this year. And that's not an injury that you rush back from. He's a good player. He's a leader. He's a badass. He was a captain for the team. He's just one of those gritty guys that you love to have in this locker room. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's just a business decision. Business is business. It's strictly financial. And if you can save $2.5 million by cutting a player that's not even going to be on the roster this year, sometimes you've got to make tough de decisions, and that might be one for Joe Shane. I also want to tell you guys about a new feature that YouTube is rolling out and it is now on Giants Now. It's called a Super Thanks. It's like super chatting, like my guy Tutu has done in the live show. But you can also now technically super chat or super thanks on videos that aren't live. 
It's right here, about right under me. It's the heart icon with the money sign in the middle. You can click on it, send a donation. It goes a long way to support the channel. We got a lot of mouths to feed, and it makes lets YouTube know that you appreciate the content that we do out. And look, everybody that super thanks from now and going forward, I will put your super thanks on screen. And if you have a question, just comment it in the comment section, and I'll make sure to give you a shout out and get your comment on every single show that you super thanks on. So if you want to show some love, people always ask me, yo, Marsh, how can I support the channel? You can super thanks, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. There's a lot of different ways. If you want to super thanks, I'd appreciate it very much. Pimpin' Ain't Easy. What a name. Pimpin' Ain't Easy. Who do you think is the biggest threat in the NFCs? To the Giants? Pains me to say it. But I do think the Dallas Cowboys right now have the most complete roster in the NFCs. And that's mainly because I think they have the best quarterback of the group of four. I think if you had to make power rankings today, it would be Cowboys, Eagles, Giants, Commanders. But look, in the NFC East, we know it's one of the craziest divisions in NFL history, and any team can win it. So I want to ask you guys this question. Who will win the NFC East this year? Do you think it's going to be the Cowboys? Type C. If you think it's going to be Washington? Type W. If you think it's the Eagles? Type E. And if you haven't put G in the comments section right now, you might be an Eagles fan. So if you think the Giants are going to win it or you want the Giants to win the NFC East, just spam G in the comment section right now. 2 2, another super chat. NYG 11 and 6 next season. And forget about it. <laughs> I love it, man. Look, 11 and 6, that would be. Best case scenario. I said the ceiling for the Giants was 10 and 7. I predicted 9 and 8. Look, the schedule is easy. According to win totals in Vegas for the 2022 NFL season, the Giants have the easiest strength of schedule. So would I see, be surprised if they win 11 and 6? Yes. But it's definitely doable for sure. 2 2, I appreciate you, bro. You're a real one. Joseph Dotson, do you think KT will get traded? KT, are you talking about Kayvon Thibodeau or Kadarius Tony? I'm assuming Kadarius Tony. No, I do not think Tony will be traded. Joe Shane was asked by Pat Leonard a couple of weeks ago, are you guys shopping Kadarius Tony? And he said no. So I'm going to take Joe Shane's word for it. I trust Joe Shane. He finally is, is the guy that's come into this organization and made me a believer in the brain trust of the Giants. And I don't think trading Kadarius Tony is a move that he's going to make. Look, is he a little bit of a knucklehead? Sure, he's a kid. So give him a break. Look. But if he's not going to come to voluntary workouts and voluntarily make the Giants better, because that's what you do when you show up to voluntary events, I have a problem with that. Does that mean I want to trade him? No, I just want him to clean up his act a little bit. Last question on today's show, Senior Giants. Do you think this is Saquon's last year with the Giants? Saquon Barkley is on the last year of his deal. If the Giants were to trade him at the NFL trade deadline, they'd save $7.2 million. But look. He's in a very similar boat as Daniel Jones. As a competitor, you can control what you can control. You want the ball in your court, and that's what Saquon Barkley has this year. If he goes out and does what he did his rookie year, when he had almost 2,000 total all-purpose yards, had 15 total touchdowns, 90 receptions, he will be back with the New York football giants. But if he did what he did last year and the year before that, and the year before that, most likely this will be his last year. I love Saquon Barkley. I have a Saquon Barkley jersey. I want him to be good. Because if he's good, this offense will be better. Barkley has the potential to be the best running back in the NFL, in my opinion. He does everything at an elite level. It's just time for him to put it all together. Another year following the ACL rehab, I think he's going to be stronger, quicker, and faster. And he's going to be playing behind the best O-line he has yet in the NFL. Do I think he's going to be on the roster next year? I really don't know. If I could type M for maybe, sure, you can do that as well. But I want you to make the tough decision right now. Should the Giants re-sign Saquon Barkley? Type Y for yes, type N for no, and I appreciate everyone that's clicked on today's video. You're a real one. That's a tough question, man. I love Saquon. I want him to be on the team. He's a good football player when healthy. He just hasn't been that. And at the position of running back, if you're not going to be healthy, man, like that, it, 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 the shelf life is already short, but 
man, I, I don't know. I, I'd love to have Saquon back. I'm a fan of his, fan of the person and a fan of the player. I think he really embodies what it means to be a New York football giant. Hopefully he's back, but I don't unfortunately get to make that call. It's really on his plate. Two to another Super Chat, my guy, MVP of today's show. Marshy, please make it official on your live show. 220 of Italian diehard Giants fans will be at D-Link this coming December Giants game. All stinky Boyd's losers pull up and show up or shut the hell up. You heard the man at the link this year. Tutu, Tutu and his crew are going to be there. That's real, man. I would love to go to a Giants game in Philly. I'd wear my Giants gear, and I'd be showing the birds. I can't do it because it might get blurred out on YouTube to all the Eagles fans. I'd get the beer flying because, look, those dudes are just a bunch of animals in Philly, and I'm not talking the good one. But Tutu, you're a real one. Thank you for all the love and support today. It goes a long way. Tell us, my bosses, that we can still continue to do live shows like this one. One more time, if you haven't yet, give me a follow on Twitter. I'm going to put it in the chat. A couple more times. Scott Burroughs says, how do you feel about Maurice Kennedy? I like what he can do as a corner, but I really think he's just going to be a depth piece. He is going to have a chance to compete, though, to make this roster. I like the fact that he has ties to Link Martindale, but he's going to have to prove it and be healthy and produce if he wants to make the team. Hammy gave me a follow on Twitter. What up, bro? I just gave you a follow back. Everybody else that gives me a follow in the next couple of minutes, I will make sure to give you a follow back. The link to my Twitter is in the live chat. If we don't get any followers, we're going to sign off, and we will see you guys tomorrow with a video on the latest Giants news and rumors. I'm going to refresh my Twitter right now. And it looks like it's it. Hammy's the only one that gave me a follow. I guess the rest of you guys are already following me on Twitter. But I appreciate everyone that's clicked on today's show. If you haven't yet, go hit that big red button. We're trying to get to 9,000 subscribers on the channel, and we'll see you next time on the next New York Giants now.